Hello there, this is Rom Wills, and I'm back at you again with yet another video. Today, I'm going to talk about the black female selection criteria. Now, this is something I've talked about in um, my other videos. I've talked about men who are select and men who are non-select. Basically, the select men are the ones who get the attention from women, and the non-select ones are the ones who don't. You know, the greater culture will refer to it as alphas and betas. But this, uh, this, as I presented in my, in my books, Nice Guys and Players and Sexual Chemistry, is uh, applied to all of Western culture. Any place you find Western culture, you'll find that select and select, select and non-select groups. But what I'm going to talk about today is specifically the female selection criteria in the African American community. Now once I explain this, it'll give the listener a better understanding of what's going on in relationships and who's getting picked, why, why there's uh, some problems. Now everybody has seen this select and non-select thing. Usually people, um, especially uh, black men, are characterized as black women wanting thugs. You know, but it's not, it's not really like that, and believe it or not, most of the men that people would categorize, characterize as thugs are actually non-select. Believe it or not, it's not the thugs who get the most women. There's some thugs in there, but once I explain, you'll understand why I say that. Now, in each group, there are two subcategories. In the select category, there are men who uh, are classified as Mr. Goodbar and the Masked Man. In the non-select category, the men classified as Gainsmen and then, of course, the uh, ubiquitous Nice Guys. And I, I want to go over each category just to give you an idea of which one, uh, well, how each one of them is where they are. Now, to understand what black women are looking for, they, the men that are in the select, they are there because they satisfy a particular criteria of the black woman. I mean, this applies to all women, like I said, but like I said, this conversation is focused on the black community. Women in general, and in this case, black women, are searching for one general thing from men, and that's uh, what's called romantic intoxication. Basically, they want they looking for that man that can make them feel good. They looking for that euphoria that comes with that quote unquote thing called love. We had an idea of it like way back in um, in the early '90s with that book, Waiting to Exhale. You know, or, you know, even now when women comment on maybe pictures on social media or they checking out somebody who turns them on, they'll say, he gives them life. Basically, they, they looking for that guy who turns them on, who arouses them, who actually turns them on sexually. Understand, this select and non-select thing is more than anything else a sexual hierarchy. It's not even a social hierarchy. And see, that's where it actually differs from uh, what people characterize as like that alpha beta thing. That's more of a social thing. Thus, under the selection criteria, a man who might be an alpha in the social world, like, you know, he's a manager, he makes all this money and stuff, might be a nice guy under the actual female selection criteria because he might not turn on women sexually. Now... As I said, there's two subcategories in each, and I want to go over them. At the top of the select categories um, are Mr. Goodbar. Those men are in the Mr. Goodbar category because they are physically attractive. That's really it. Now, I know I did some videos, and I talked about different good bar archetypes and all that good stuff, but reality is most of the men, the overwhelming majority of the men, 90% of the men who are judged by women as Mr. Goodbar, 
are either going to be very, very handsome, physically attractive. Uh, they're going to have good body builds, like superior body builds. Like there was a, a personal trainer on uh, social media that once commented that only one out of 20,000 men in the United States will have six-pack abs. Uh, basically, the men in the Mr. Goodbar category are there because they look good. That's, that's basically it. I know a lot of people like to try to say, well, looks don't matter and all that. Yeah, it matters very much, especially in the African-American community. Now, the men in the Mr. Goodbar category, there's going to be a tendency. Not, they, not only are they going to be maybe muscular or physically attractive, but there's two things I've noticed. A lot of Some people have caught on to one of them, not so much the other one. One thing is going to be a skin color issue. There's a lot of colorism. A lot of sisters like to accuse black men of colorism, but they're the ones talking about, oh, he light skin or he's a chocolate brother or something like that. A significant portion of the men in the Mr. Goodbye category are light complexion. Um, and they also want to have uh, what was called back in the day, but now it's politically correct to do it now, that good hair. I would just say they would have a finer grade of hair. In fact, um, the real origin of even calling somebody fine meant they had closer to white features. They didn't have maybe the broad nose and fuller lips of a, or of a person more closer to an African phenotype. That's where that word fine came from. Fine hair, fine features. And most of the men in the Mr. Goodbar category in the African American community is going to come close to that. Now, yes, you have some chocolate brothers in there and, you know, some browner brothers, but the tendency there is they almost have to have almost perfect physical features. And even then, they might not, they might be like, like a chocolate Ken doll or something. So, you know, that, that's a very important consideration. A lot of times it's, it's on that looks because we can't really discuss physical appearance in the uh, black community without discussing uh, like eternalized racism and just quite frankly hating our own features. And that's really, that's really another video. I'll probably hit that again at some point. But you know, the main, main ingredient for Mr. Goodbar, they in the Mr. Good, Goodbar category because they look good, regardless of their complexion. Now, there's only a few of those type of men, you know. If, uh, so you have another type of man, and especially when women get older, they, they need a little bit more. They find out those pretty boys are trifling and don't want to do shit, at least some of them. So women being pragmatic, they start to expand their um, horizon, so to speak. The next type of man in the select group are the masked men. And to understand the masked man, understand, it's not like the man consciously put on a mask. Nah, or like he's hiding his true feelings or something. What he's realized is that the women he's trying to relate to, they're looking at surface characteristics. So this is going to be the man who's going to, you know, he's going to use his status. He's this the man going to get that late model car because he know women going to go crazy over it. This the man going to make sure his clothes are like name brand and all of that stuff. Um, this the man, uh, he might not have the raw physical genetics of Mr. Goodbar, but he's going to make up for it. Uh, you know, he, he going to make sure the haircut tight and everything. And basically, he's going to become on the surface what black women say they want. And, you know, he'll have the money. He'll have the education. Usually, if you look at it, especially with the status thing, it's usually the popular guy or, you know, a guy might not look as good, but maybe on a college campus, it's like whatever the most popular frats is. Or if it's a basketball school, it might be all the jocks, regardless of how they look. Or if it's a football school, the fo football players. Or I remember years ago on Howard University, I think late 80s, they had a really good soccer team. And I was hearing that the soccer players were making out like bandits. So that mask is whatever it takes to place a raw physical attractiveness. And a lot of times it's status. You know, a lot of times if, you know, if a woman's out and she sees some dude, he pull up in a late model car. He got a nice suit on and everything and, you know, got everything on point. 
she'll look, she'll squint a little bit. She she might be like, yeah, he look like Denzel. And in fact, uh, even celebrities, a lot of celebrities are actually masked men. If a lot of these Bamas were working for UPS or something like that, they wouldn't get the time of day from uh, sisters up there talking about, oh, yeah, he fine. It was like, um, shit. Now, if he was, uh, now if he was working in a warehouse somewhere, he wouldn't be. So, you have those two. And also, yeah, in a masked man category, maybe somebody who visibly makes a lot of money. Because uh, it's not just money that puts a man there or even status. There's a lot of nice guys who are professionals and stuff. And they, you know, they even got a lot of money. But they might not look as good as Mr. Goodbar and they don't visibly look like they have money. So those that's the select group. The next group are the uh, non-select and you that's split between the gamesmen and the nice guys. Now, we all know about the nice guys, so I'll say that for last. The gamesmen, they're not the type of dudes who you don't think in terms of pimps or what passes for game on um, like on the internet. The gamesman is just that dude. He figured out, hey, he don't look as good as Mr. Goodbar. He ain't going to be no celebrity. He going to figure out how to get his. And if he got to, you know, this is going to be the cat. You know, if he has to deal with a bunch of overweight women, he's going to do it gleefully. Or if he figured out how to read a woman to figure out whatever insecurities he has, he's going to do it. Here's the irony. Here's the irony. A lot of times when women, black women especially, think about players or complaining about men or they saying a man is trifling, in many cases, in many cases, not all cases, but in many cases, they're talking about a gamesman. See, here's the thing with Mr. Goodbar. Mr. Goodbar, you know, he either going to be with a real fine woman or he's, you know, He's messing with several women at the same time, so you might not actually see him with a woman, but, you know, he got a bunch of women, you know, he got on booty call status, or sometimes he's messing with a married woman or a woman who's otherwise involved. So he's, he's actually low-key. You might not see how he's rolling, you know. And, in fact, you, like I said, you would definitely, in many cases, you'll think he don't even have a woman. But then you start talking to some women in his social circle or around them, and they'll start telling you some stuff. There's been several dudes who were in that good bar category that I found out how they were rolling because women were telling me. They were like, yeah, dude, right there, he doing this, that, and the third. And I'd be looking at him and say, damn, I ain't even ever seen a dude talk to a woman. And they'd be like, yeah, he be doing all this stuff. And then, you know, you talk to him, you find out they did that and more. Nah, well, usually black women ain't talking about them anyway. Plus, in this community, the African American community, if a dude look really that good, well, black women give him a pass. <laughs> they give him a big ass pass. You know, as some YouTube personalities. Anyway, and the mass man, you know, we talking like dudes making a lot of money, got a status. Those dudes ain't hanging around with the average sister. Those, those, those the top shelf brothers and shit, you know? They ain't hanging around. If they going to hang around, they, they in exclusive environments. Those are the ones in the private clubs if they just regular professionals. And if they pro athletes, just, just give it up. If they celebrities, they're only dealing with a small percentage of black women anyway. The gamesman, even though he's non-select, gets a lion's share of the sisters, even though they chasing for the top two. And the reason why I say that is, it's not that the women are choosing them. It's that these dudes are wearing these women down. And a lot of these women will get with one of these guys thinking they can change them or they'll deal with them because, you know, Mr. Goodbar ain't going to return that text. And, you know, a masked man, he ain't feeling the woman's hairstyle. So, you know, a lot of these women, they're they dealing with some trifling ass dude to begin with. And the problem with the trifling ass dude is that he's trifling. He's not going to have a problem hitting on her baby sister or something. And in some real sad cases, even her daughters. He's not going to have a problem with all of that. And, and those are just the ones who really go after women. A lot of them just give that thing on the surface like they don't even want women. But they're aggressive. That, that's the thing. They, the, that's the whole thing. They're going to have some type of game, whether their game is wearing somebody down or, 
you know, trying to talk to every woman on the street. Something like, you know, they're they going to have something because they got to compensate for, you know, the women ain't choosing them. They, the women ain't choosing them up. So a lot of times the women will say, all right, I'm, I'll let it I'll let it go. You know, sometimes this guy, this the one who a woman say, all right, I'll let you, you know, a, a woman will let uh, the dude suck her tits, you know, might let her give him a massage, and then all of a sudden that dude in there. And she'd be like, damn, what? She'd be looking at, she'd be looking at dude like wondering why she with him. And it was like, nah, he just wore it down. You know, these guys are persistent. And then that final one in the, um, non-select group is the nice guy now here's the thing with the nice guy if you really look at most nice guys you know i know you know the terms lame corny nerd but that's a few of them a lot of them just regular guys those are the nice guys are just the regular guys nah they don't have the looks they don't have that status but a lot of them still make money a lot of them are still good and here's the irony here's the biggest single irony with that female selection criteria a lot of times, the nice guys out of all the three groups are the ones with the most positive intentions towards black women. And I'm going to say that again, and this is why I saved that for last. This is the whole irony of the black female selection criteria. The men that get pushed away the most, the ones who get friends on, the ones who get messed with, are the ones who like black women the most. In fact, uh, some people will call them simps, white knights, whatever. But the reality is, those the ones who those the ones who will willingly. I talked in my last video about uh, black men that wanted to be cleanup men. Most of the nice guys, if a woman act, if she act right, he'll be a cleanup man. He'll 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 take care of that kid left by uh, Mr. Goodbar. You know. You know, he won't make fun. I mean, he'll deal with a woman. She might not be all that. As long as she, all she had to do is treat him right. But black women mistreat or ignore the men who want them the most. And basically, you know, it's always like, well, you know, he ain't sexy enough. He ain't, he, he ain't making enough money, a bunch of other stuff, you know. And uh, most of the negative stuff, like I said, <laughs> That's really dealing with the gamesmen. They ain't even dealing with good boy. Or, and they definitely not dealing with mass man. But a lot of times they dealing with some other non-select guy. And then you have this guy who wants you, who's defending you. You know. If somebody got a problem with this video, if a male has a problem, he's one of those nice guys. And then, you know, he's sitting up there. He's trying to impress the sisters and everything. And they like, well, I just see you as a friend. <laughs> You know, why they trying to get in Mr. Goodbar's rotation. So, and, you know, I talk about that female selection criteria because, it, look, here's a reality. And I know women don't like anything put on them or to be accountable, but the reality is this. If women have a problem with that state of affairs, it's nothing men can do to change it. I mean, I wrote my books to help men become more select you know, to try to make that climb. But the reality is women make the choice. Because here's the thing. Most men, if you present this to them, most men will say they one of the top two. Very few men would, they, nobody's going to say they're a gamesman. You know, most men, if you ask them, they will say, oh, I'm Mr. Goodbar. You know. Just because they had, you know, some women they thought were chasing them. Or they would, uh, you know, because they have a steady job, maybe a manager, maybe making a little bit more than average, they'll think they may be a masked man. And, nah, they're just a nice guy, you know. Or whatever. They could even be a gamesman. All gamesmen ain't bad. They're just aggressive, but they ain't bad. But women make that choice. And this, we, we men, we can't do anything about it. I think that's why a lot of men are saying stuff. We realize, hey, you the one who makes the choice. You put us in the category. We can't put ourselves. If we, A man ain't going to voluntarily put himself in a non-select category. You know. You now, you get some men, they'll, they'll acknowledge that they might be nice guys. And they do it after they've been 
you know, a woman done stomped him for the umpteenth time in her mad rush to get to Mr. Goodbar. But women have to change it. And women, any women think it, because I know a couple, I know a couple of my trolls going to hit up this uh, video. Think about it. We don't make that choice. Men do not make the choice where we are. I mean, men cannot put themselves put themselves in a category, you know. And I know some men they'll say, "Well, it shouldn't be like that." It was like, "Bruh, <laughs> I'm just telling you how women do." They might not use those terms, but trust me, they categorize men. Because I remember when I first presented this, uh, and other people have presented this system too, but. I presented this to some black women way back in the 1990s, some older black women. And I talked about this in one of the videos. They were trying to add categories. <laughs> they were trying to give you more. They ain't argue with it. They were like, oh, yeah, you forgot about this bit. And women do that. They will have it. They might even have that, uh, you know, men have teams and stuff. They have women have rosters. They, they got one guy they got for dick. <laughs> one guy to take them on dates. <laughs> I mean, that's just it. And But see, here's the thing. Men don't put them, men want to be number one. We don't put it. So if women, if women want to change the state of affairs, women collectively have to say, look, we're going to change it. Because I'm going to tell you what, and this is for the black women who are going to listen to this video. And I'm going to just tell you straight up had the power. And, you know, the only power men have is whether we're going to accept it. And, you know, of course, I kind of did that in the video. Men are rebelling against that. But if the reality is if women say to men collectively, we want pirates, by 6 o'clock the next day, there'll be a bunch of dudes walking around with some eye patches on talking about some R. In fact, if women say that, I would immediately put stock in any company that sells parrots because you'll see a lot of parrots walking around. You won't even see pit bulls walking around anymore. There'd be a bunch of brothers with some parrots if sisters say they want it, you know? So, you know, that's just a brief thing with that female selection craze. It's, it's actually deeper, though. That's just, I could probably do like a four-hour seminar on it. But just something for everybody to think about. Anyway, I'm good, you good. Y'all have a good day. Peace.